Hello students, welcome to the lecture on working capital management and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the concept of working capital, define the types of working capital, discuss the approaches to managing working capital, understand the importance of working capital management, explain the capital and operating cycle and describe the working capital management under inflation. Concept of working capital. Let me first tell you what working capital is. Working capital refers to firms investment in short term assets with cash, short term securities, accounts receivables, debtors and inventories of raw materials, work in process and finished goods. Working capital management is the process of planning and controlling the level and mix of current assets of the firm as well as financing these assets. There are two definitions of working capital. Gross working capital. This refers to working capital as the total of current assets. Net working capital. This refers to working capital as excess of current assets over current liabilities. Financing mix refers to the proportion of current assets financed by current liabilities and long-term funds. Two approaches which determine the financing mix are aggressive approach. According to this, the long-term funds are used to finance only the core or fixed portion of current assets and the other portion, that is, temporary and seasonal requirements are financed by short-term funds. This is high-risk, high-profit approach conservative approach. According to this, the total current assets are financed from long-term sources and short-term sources are used only in emergency situation. This is low-risk, low-profit approach. Operating cycle. The operating cycle is the length of time required for conversion of non-cash assets into cash. This operating cycle refers to the time taken for the conversion of cash into raw materials, raw materials into work in progress, work in progress into finished goods, finished into receivables, into cash and this cycle repeats. The length of operating cycle can be calculated by raw materials storage period is equal to average stock of raw materials and stores upon average daily consumption of raw material and stores. Work in process period is equal to average work in process inventory upon average cost of production per day. Finished goods storage period is equal to average finished goods inventory upon average cost of goods sold per day. Debtors collection period is equal to average books debts upon average credit sales per day. Length of operating cycle is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Objective of receivable management. To attain not maximum possible but optimum volume of sales. To exercise control over the cost of credit and maintain it on a minimum possible level. To keep investments at an optimum level in the form or receivables to plan and maintain a short average collection period. Types of working capital. Working capital is classified into two categories. Fixed working capital. There is always a certain minimum level of current assets which is essential for the firm to carry on its business irrespective of the level of operations. This is the irreducible minimum amount necessary for maintaining the circulation of the current assets. This minimum level of investment in current assets is permanently locked up in business and is therefore referred to as permanent or fixed or regular working capital. Fluctuating working capital. Any special advertising campaigns organized for increasing sales or other promotional activities may have to be financed by additional working capital. The extra working capital needed to support the changing business activities 
is called the fluctuating variable seasonal temporary or special working capital. Approaches to managing working capital. The approaches of estimating working capital are conventional method, matching of cash inflows and outflows. This method ignores time value of money. Operating cycle method, debtors plus stock, RM, WIP, FG, creditors. This method takes into account length of time which is required to convert cash into resources, resources to final product, final product to debtors and debtors to cash again. Cash cost technique. Working capital forecast is done on cost basis, that is taking P and L items into account. Balance sheet method. Working capital forecast is done on various assets and liabilities, that is taking BS items into account. Two approaches are generally followed for the management of working capital, the conventional approach and the operating cycle approach. The conventional approach. This approach implies managing the individual components of working capital efficiently and economically so that there are neither idle, neither funds, nor paucity of funds. The operating cycle approach. This approach views working capital as a function of the volume of operating expenses. Under this approach, the working capital is determined by the duration of the operating cycle and the operating expenses needed for completing the cycle. Importance of working capital management. Because of its close relationship with the day-to-day -day operations of a business, a study of working capital and its management is of major importance to internal as well as external analysts. It is being increasingly realized that inadequacy or mismanagement of working capital is the leading cause of business failures. We must not lose sight of the fact that management of working capital is an integral part of the overall financial management and ultimately of the overall corporate management. Neglect of management of working capital may result in technical insolvency and even liquidation of a business unit. Implementation of operating plans may become difficult and consequently the firm's profit goals may not be achieved. Operating inefficiencies may creep in due to difficulties in meeting even day-to-day -day commitments. Fixed assets may not be efficiently utilized due to lack of working funds. Attractive credit opportunities may have to be lost due to paucity of working capital. The firm loses its reputation when it is not in a position to honor its short-term obligations. Excessive working capital may pose the following dangers. Excess of working capital may result in unnecessary accumulation of inventories, increasing the chances of inventory mishandling, waste and theft. It may provide an undue incentive for adopting too liberal a credit policy and slackening of collection of receivables. Excessive working capital may make management complacent, leading eventually to managerial inefficiency. It may encourage the tendency to accumulate inventories for making speculative profits, causing a liberal dividend policy, which becomes difficult to maintain when the firm is unable to make speculative profits. Principles of Working Capital Management the following are the four principles of working capital management policy. Principle of optimization. The working capital should be maintained at an optimum level. This is the point at which the increase in cost due to decline in working capital is equal to the increase in the gain associated with it. Principle of risk variation. This principle is based on the assumption that the rate of return on investment is linked with the degree of risk in the business. Principle of cost of capital Each source of working capital has different cost of capital. 
principle of maturity of payment. This principle states that the working capital should be so raised from different sources that the firm is able to repay them on maturity out of its inflows of funds. Factors affecting working capital needs The amount of working capital is determined by a wide variety of factors. Nature of business The working capital requirement of a firm depends on the nature of the business. Seasonality of operations If the product of the firm has a seasonal demand, like refrigerators, the firms need high working capital in the periods of summer and the firm needs low working capital in the periods of winter. Production cycle The term production cycle refers to the time involved in the manufacture of goods. It covers the time span between the procurement of the raw materials and the completion of the manufacturing process leading to the production of goods. Production policy The production policy of the firm determines the amount of working capital requirement. Credit policy The level of the working capital is also determined by the credit policy as the firm's credit policy determines the amount of receivables. Market conditions The working capital requirements are also determined by the market conditions. A firm can manage with low inventory and will need low working capital requirements. Conditions of supply The availability of raw materials and spares also determine the level of working capital. Capital and operating cycle Working capital is also known as revolving capital and a circular path of conversion, reconversion takes place. This revolution of cycle is called as the operating cycle. Operating cycle refers to the length of time necessary to complete the following cycle of events. Stage 1. Conversion of cash into inventory. In this, cash first gets converted into raw materials, then work in progress and then finished goods in a typical manufacturing concern. Stage 2. Conversion of inventory into debtors. The inventory thus produced or purchased gets converted into debtors or receivables upon credit sales. Stage 3. Conversion of debtors into cash. The debtors or accounts receivables get in turn converted back into cash when they make payment. Shorter duration of operating cycle indicates an efficient working capital management. Determinants of working capital investment needs The amount of working capital that a firm would need is affected not only by the factors associated with the firm itself, but is also affected by economic, monetary and general business environment. Among the various factors, the following are important ones. Nature and size of business the working capital needs of a firm are basically influenced by the nature of its business. For example, trading and financial firms generally have a low investment in fixed assets but require a large investment in working capital. The size of business also has an important impact on its working capital needs. Size may be measured in terms of the scale of operations. Manufacturing cycle the manufacturing cycle starts with the purchase of raw materials and is completed with the production of finished goods. If the manufacturing cycle involves a longer period, the need for working capital will be more. Business fluctuations Seasonal and cyclical fluctuations in demand for a product affect the working capital requirement considerably, especially the temporary working capital requirements of the firm. Production policy. If a firm follows steady production policy, even when the demand is seasonal, inventory will accumulate during off-season periods and there will be higher inventory costs and risks. Turnover of circulating capital. The speed with which the operating cycle completes its round, that is cash to raw materials to finished product to accounts receivables to cash, plays a decisive role 
in influencing the working capital needs. Credit terms. The credit policy of the firm affects the size of working capital by influencing the level of book debts. Growth and expansion activities. As a company grows logically, larger amounts of working capital will be needed, though it is difficult to state any firm rules regarding the relationship between growth in the volume of a firm's business and its working capital needs. Operating efficiency. Operating efficiency means optimum utilization of resources. The firm can minimize its need for working capital by efficiently controlling its operating costs. Price level changes. Generally, rising price level requires a higher investment in working capital. With increasing prices, the same levels of current assets need enhanced investment. Seasonality of operations. If the product of the firm has a seasonal demand like refrigerators, the firms need high working capital in the periods of summer as the demand for the refrigerators is more and the firm needs low working capital in the periods of winter as the demand for the product is low. Other factors. A high net profit margin contributes towards the working capital pool. Working capital needs also depend upon the means of transport and communication. Working capital management under inflation. It is desirable to check the increasing demand for capital for maintaining the existing level of activity. In order to control working capital needs in periods of inflation, the following measures may be applied. The possibility of using substitute raw materials without affecting quality must be explored in all seriousness. Attempts must be made to increase the productivity of the workforce by proper motivational strategies. The managed costs should be properly scrutinized in terms of their costs and benefits. Computation of working capital Firstly, let us understand some concepts before computing working capital. Current assets Current assets are generally those assets which can be liquidated quickly or whenever need them liquidated. Current liabilities. Current liabilities are those liabilities that might have to be paid anytime soon. The payment date for current liabilities is not fixed and the debt might mature anytime. Calculating working capital. Take the total of the current liabilities and subtract them from the current assets. The result will be the working capital. Current assets minus current liabilities is equal to working capital. Negative working capital can be a good thing for high turn businesses. Companies that have high inventory turns and do business on a cash basis such as a grocery store need very little working capital. Since cash is generated so quickly, managements can simply stockpile the proceeds from their daily sales for a short period of time if a financial crisis arises. Since cash can be raised so quickly, there is no need to have a large amount of working capital available. Summary Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. Working capital is the amount of capital that a business has available to meet the day-to-day -day cash requirements of its operations. There are two concepts of working capital namely gross concept and net concept. Working capital management throws a challenge and a welcome opportunity for a financial manager who's ready to play a pivotal role in his organization. Net working capital investment requirement varies from one company to another. Current assets are generally those assets which can be liquidated quickly or whenever need them liquidated.